What's up everyone, Cole Caparoon here. Now it is not very often that a product comes along that is truly unique and original. The market is so flooded with so many plugins and so many pieces of gear that it's just, it's a rare thing. There's not a lot of things left to do. What's even more rare than that is when that new, fresh, interesting, innovative product comes along and it exactly fills a hole in my workflow and in my studio, like it was made for me. Now, this video is not sponsored by anyone. However, we are giving away one of these SPL big units to one of you. And so stay tuned and I'll explain how to enter in just a little bit. But there is a couple questions that I, I want to answer about this. One, what exactly does it do? Because it's, it's not super obvious by looking at it. Two, can we actually get this done with a plugin? Can we mimic what this does with a plugin? And we're gonna work our way through all of that. So the first time I saw this unit was at NAMM a few months ago. So I talked them into sending me one so I could test it out here in my room, kind of long-term, really wrap my head around it. So what does this magic black box actually do? Well, right on the front panel, it says Stereo Image Bigger Maker. I, I love when companies are lighthearted enough to put stuff like that on their gear, it's my favorite. But the biggest knob that you see right in the front is kind of a traditional stereo width knob that you might have seen on plugins. Where it starts to get a little crazy is when you look at the range knob. Now, you can see that all the way clockwise we see open and all the way counterclockwise we see high. And so what that means is, if you have your width knob halfway up or wherever you, you have it, all the way clockwise on the open position, you are widening the entire stereo spectrum. And as you rotate uh, that knob counterclockwise more towards the high, basically what you're doing is you're using a high pass this is the best way that I can come up with how to explain this, and this may not technically even be how this box works, but this is what I feel like it does, and this is what my ears are telling me it does. As you rotate that knob counterclockwise, uh, it begins like high passing the widening effect. And so all the way on open, the full frequency spectrum is getting widened, and as you turn it down to eight, and it may be everything only above 300 hertz is getting widened. And as you rotate it down to five, maybe only anything above 1K is getting widened, and so on and so forth. By the time you're all the way over to one, only everything above maybe 15 or 16K is getting widened. Now, I have no idea what the actual frequency points are here, but that's what the tool does. That's what that knob does, and I've never seen anything else that does that. Now the next knob is the stage selection knob. The idea here is that you're moving the sound from in front of you to behind you. I'm not quite convinced that I actually hear things moving past me forward to back. Uh, there is definitely a whole lot of character in this knob. It changes the way the widening feels completely. Uh, we're gonna listen to some sound examples here in a minute. It's a very cool knob. And finally, the bass switch. Now this is, uh, hopefully I get this right, this is derived from the air bass circuit from SPL's iron mastering compressor. Very high-end expensive compressor. And here's what I know. All I can tell you is that when I flip that bass switch, I love what it does. If I'm working on something and I feel like it needs some oomph, it needs some thicker sub bass, I flip that switch and it does exactly what in my head I would like to have come out the speakers. I have no idea what all's going on behind that switch. All I know is I flip it and I love it. So before we jump into Pro Tools and take a listen to what this does, you guys know how we do it here. We're giving one of these away for free to one of you. Now, there will be full instructions in the description of this video for how to win this giveaway, but I, I wanna strongly encourage you guys, don't believe any scams. I will not be replying to comments down below saying that you've won, and I will not be asking for any money in order to win this. There's a lot of scams going on on YouTube right now. Don't believe it. You will be notified via a reply to your entry email that you have won, and we'll be asking for further instructions. Uh, the instructions down below, and then there's gonna be three code words flash across the screen. 
between now and the end of the video. And you're gonna need to know these three code words, write them down and then email them to the giveaway email below with your Instagram handle. I'll put the closing date down below when the giveaway is over. Please do not send anybody any money. Please do not reply to scams in the comments below. Okay, so let's jump into Pro Tools and let's take a listen to what this crazy box sounds like. So that's an overview of the sound samples and what it actually sounds like in use. But there's one more thing that I wanna talk about that I think is really important. When you widen something, you're basically playing around with the phase of the stereo image to give you the illusion that it is wider. This is how pretty much all stereo imaging widening tools work. And so sometimes this can cause you real problems when you're collapsing a track to mono. So what, what I wanna do is I'm, I'm gonna play you these samples again and I'm gonna put the, the sound into mono for you, and then I'm gonna bypass this on and off, and I just want you to listen to the lack of difference in the phase coherence and in the sound when we're in mono when I'm bypassing this box. Take, take a listen to this.
So what that means is somehow with all the trickery that is happening in this box, it is not messing with the, the phase relationship in mono at all. The mix still will collapse to mono identically regardless of how extreme the settings are in this. I have no idea how that's possible but it does it. Now I did spend some time comparing this to a plugin, my favorite plugin for widening mixes prior to this, and I did spend some time collapsing it to mono between the two. All I'm gonna say is I think this has a better phase coherence and I like this better than the plugin that I've been using forever. So a question that I had, and I spent some time trying to duplicate this, is this box better than a plugin? Can we even get this result from a plugin. So can you get things wider with a plugin? Yes. Can you use something similar to this range tool and mimic the crossover effect of the widening? Kind of yes, it's not the same thing and it's really hard and complex. And then you get to the stage tool that is, uh, to me this is just a character tool. What I can say with 100% certainty is it does completely change the way the widening feels and I don't really know how to put it in words, but it is a knob that I wouldn't have the slightest idea how to duplicate with a plugin. I don't have any idea what it's actually doing on a, on a technical level in order to mimic it with the plugin, so no. And then we get to the bass control. Now, I don't know what all's happening behind the scenes with this bass control. Could you mimic it with an EQ? Yeah, maybe. For some reason, when I flip that switch, it just does exactly what I want. As soon as I flip the switch, you heard the examples. It's what I want to happen when I want it to happen, and I flip one switch, and there it is. And these are the sort of things that are worth something to me, the things that give me the results that I want, quick and painless without much effort. That's Those are the things that I want to invest in. I have used it on every single mix and every single master that I've worked on since it showed up at my front door. And again, SPL is not paying me to say this. So I'm keeping this. This is not going anywhere. This is staying in my room. I hope that I explained it in a decent enough way for you. Don't forget the links in the description below. Don't forget to uh, email me the three code words to giveaway at gmail.com. Again, all the instructions down below. Do not reply to comments that are asking for money or saying that you've won, because it's not me. I will notify people via reply to your entry email, and best of luck on the giveaway. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.